Okay, this is going to be very, very short. Um, the Module 24 will be covered in pieces throughout multiple courses. So at this point in fundamentals, I just want to give you a, a brief introduction to culture and diversity. Culture is a pattern of behavior and thinking that people living in social groups learn, develop, and share. Our values are preferred ways of behavior or thinking that are sustained over time and used to govern a cultural group's actions, decisions. If you notice there, it's a preferred way of behavior. Cultural competence is the ability to apply the knowledge and skills to provide high quality evidence-based care to patients of diverse backgrounds and beliefs, overcome barriers, access resources, promoting health and wellness. It begins with gaining an understanding of the different values and beliefs and recognizing them. So none of us are 100% competent in every culture. We need to understand there's different cultures that people have different values, and different um, backgrounds, even not just from a, another country, but it can be from different areas, even within the United States, within a state, within counties. Um, also between ages, there's something your textbook talks about called ageism. Ageism is making assumptions due to someone's age. So just assuming because somebody's elderly, you have assumptions about them. That's called ageism and something we have to avoid. And just because you look and you think, oh, this person looks like they're from the Middle East. They must be Muslim and they must do this. Never assume. Always ask. Always be aware and always be accepting of whatever someone's belief system or preferences are. Um, social differences, there's religious variations. Um, you will do a big, whole big thing on the different religions and impacting healthcare when you get to community. And in multiple areas, you will have cultural, social differences that are brought up as, as concepts are brought up. So uh, space, culture defines perceptions of personal space. It is important to respect individuals' perception of boundaries of personal space. Some people need bigger personal space than others. Often it's culturally defined. Sometimes it's just a personal preference. Like, I like my personal space. Some people get very close. There are things like uh, with eye contact. Uh, some, re some cultures don't look straight in the eye, they find that offensive by them looking away and not eye contact does not mean they're not listening to you, does not mean they're disrespectful. They may find it disrespectful because you're looking in their eyes. So don't make assumptions because they are avoiding eye contact. So we may cause anxiety if we are doing something that they're not used to or un if they're uncomfortable from their culture. Developing cultural competency, the ability to apply knowledge, skills, provide high quality evidence-based care. That is the definition. It is a process as well as an outcome. We want to be able to develop this ability to be competent whatever culture comes. Again, we will not know all cultures. We don't go find another nurse that's better with that culture of that culture or that, that religious belief. We need to be able to adapt and, and be diverse and accepting. Um, there, I said, mentioned eye contact. Uh, they may be issues with male versus female, not wanting a male to take care of them, not wanting a female or only having a female come in. There may be that the male is dominant in, or, or the elder is dominant or, or different things. So needing to ask and be respectful, ask who is the decision maker, things like that to provide the care. If they prefer only a female, you do everything in your ability to try to provide that. Um, cultural confidence, it develops over time with we learn more and just be accepting, develop knowledge about different similarities, inequalities. Um, don't try to fight and push our your own belief system onto others. What else? Um, provide care that respects patients' cultural values, beliefs, and behaviors. I mentioned if they want only a female to take care of it, if the male is the person who's going to make the decisions, if certain 
caregivers they don't want in the room. Uh, meal, meal preparation, meals in the hospital, teaching about meals when they're going home, who makes those decisions, if, if who's preparing the meals. It's not always calling the dietitian in. Um, you just find out, maybe give them variety and ask questions about that. Um, it's so again, like like meal preparation. If they're going to be discharged, it doesn't. What you do is you find out who's buying the food, who's preparing the meals, who's making decisions, and and teach that person, that individual, have discussions with them. Okay, use of an interpreter. This is something that you will learn over time. It's nice to have a bilingual nurse available because of the language, the healthcare language. It can be more difficult. We, you can use electronic telephone things. Um, there are, I've worked at hospitals that have language lines you can use. I've actually had to use in outpatient settings um, Google language where I can type it in and it translates to their, their language. They read it if they can read in their language. You can find the right dialect. This challenges interpreters may have no previous knowledge of the patient. Some cultures find it offensive to discuss medical issues with a person of an op opposite gender or younger. So there's multiple problems with it. When possible, use an interpreter to translate. Translates provides meaning, meaning behind words. Try to get same gender as the patient. Avoid using family member. Unfortunately, you end up doing that quite a bit because you want to try to protect their confidentiality and you don't want the interpreter or family member to misunderstand and translate incorrectly. And it's very odd when you use an interpreter, you're not speaking to the interpreter, you're speaking to your patient or your client, maintaining that eye contact with them and with the interpreter, but your questions are addressed directly to the patient, not the interpreter. Try to use simplified terms when possible. Errors of assessment use of, oh, always asking about different healing practices, not to make assumptions about abuse and different things, and you will get this more like in pediatrics and community as, as you go further into your nursing education. And that, I told you this was a short one on culture, so I am done with everything you need to know from this module.